we are going to hear from a company that is doing work that's you know really critical right now we see uh food being you know plowed under stuff food being dumped um, and that's just on top of the waste streams that we already have uh, so we're gonna hear a little bit more about what's happening with uh, upcycling and Claire from a Newell Mill, please uh, take us away. Okay, well, good afternoon. It, it is such a pleasure and an honor to be um, speaking with you all today and to have, to have a bit of this community here. Um, my name is Claire Schlemme and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Renewal Mill. Uh, Renewal Mill is a next, next generation ingredient company that upcycles byproducts from food manufacturing into delicious premium ingredients and products. We're helping to solve global food loss and fight climate change by turning supply chain inefficiencies into profitable revenue streams. We're building a new circular economy of food that's better for people and the planet we love. Food waste reduction has been a growing industry that was recently valued over $46 billion. Upcycling has repeatedly been named a top trend of 2019 and 2020, and it's headlined every major food show for the past year. Consumer data show that nearly 60% of consumers actively aim to buy more food and beverages using upcycled ingredients. Um, in short, upcycling is going to be huge. And Renewal Mill is a leader in the upcycled food space. We use a unique co-location model to turn the byproducts into ingredients. We place our proprietary equipment directly inside the food manufacturing facility that is generating byproducts. This allows us to keep the process food safe and cost competitive. It also means that we're able to provide a complete byproduct offtake solution for the manufacturers we work with. We've strategically begun to build our upcycled ingredient portfolio with the byproducts from plant-based milk production. These byproducts are versatile, nutritionally dense, and they have very agreeable flavors and neutral colors. Our flagship product is organic okara flour, which is a high fiber, high protein, and gluten-free flour made from the soybean pulp that's produced during soy milk production. We're in the process of commercializing our second ingredient, oat flour from oat milk, as part of a partnership with Barilla. The demand for upcycled ingredients is seen through our initial ingredient sales. We've proven out our traction by working with some nimble emerging food brands like Humphrey Slocum Ice Cream, Square Baby, Pulp Pantry, and Tia Lupita. Um, and we have a planned product releases this year and next year with a number of large national brands and retailers. In addition to ingredient sales, we use our own branded product line as our marketing department. It allows us to have rapid market entry and build awareness around our ingredients and the concept of upcycling more broadly. We currently have four SKUs, Okara flour, a one-to-one -one gluten-free baking flour, a brownie mix, and vegan chocolate chip cookies. So COVID has propelled us into this unprecedented time when we have dramatically changed human behavior on a, on a global scale. As people are spending more time at home, they're becoming reacquainted with baking and ingredients as a way to both pass the time and to connect with family and, and children. It's a moment really for Renewal Mill to provide products that people are demanding while introducing them to this better way to bake. And when the world begins to reopen, we have this real opportunity to, to do things right for the future. The renewed interest in baking now is a wonderful moment to have a widespread adoption of upcycled ingredients and to plant that seed for growing a better food system. So because of COVID, we've pivoted to meet baking demand by focusing on e-commerce and retail platforms. Uh, just within the past month, we've been approved by some of the largest e-commerce platforms, including Good Eggs, Thrive Market, and Imperfect Foods. We're launching at Whole Foods in June, and our Amazon and website sales have grown 5x. Uh, we're raising funds to support this growth. We have large POs coming in and we want to ensure that we have the marketing and sales support to turn first time customers into repeat customers. And though our immediate focus is this opportunity with CPG, this goes well beyond baking mixes. Um, the past month has shown us how critical it is to care for the earth and to use our resources efficiently. Feeding a rapidly growing global population without harming the planet requires that everything we're producing is being used. And upcycling is a critical part of the solution. And Renewal Mill is proud to be the food company defining what it can mean to eat in the post-waste world. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amazing work, Claire. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to just kick it right over and have Jonathan dig in uh, with questions that he may have. Sure. Um, thanks for being here, Claire. It's, it's been great to watch your, your brand grow. And 
um, you know, with all the supply chain disruptions that are happening and seeing all the food that's wasted, it's, it's, it's great to see um, a company, you know, using food waste for good. Um, can you just talk a bit about why you started with um, plant-based milk pro byproducts and kind of where you see yourself going? Sure, yeah. So there's there's a couple of reasons why we've started with this sector. One is that it's a very fast growing sector. So that helps us with our own supply, knowing that, um, that that supply of the byproduct will continue to grow and that it's growing very quickly. And the other, the other piece of it is that the um, production of, of plant-based milks is very concentrated. So that means that we have um, a, a, much easier, a much easier ability to own supply chains relatively quickly. Um, with our co-location model. Thank you. Kristen, do you have a question for Claire? Sure. Well, one, I just, same thing, watching you grow and having you here present um, a couple of times and just um, really, really um, loving the model. Uh, I love everything about the circular economy and so particularly when it comes to baked goods. And I'm just curious how, now that we have new bakers coming online with the COVID crisis and being at home, what are you seeing as far as reorders and how many um, people are converting into this way of um, understanding your product and using it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say it's still it's still kind of early days to have like a very complete answer to that question, but we've seen um, we've seen more repeat and like fast repeat orders um, on the website and through Amazon, which has been great. So um, particularly with our newest SKU, the brownie mix, that seems to be something that um, people are trying once uh, they you know it's it tastes great, and so they're coming back for it again. Um, I think it also helps just that we we have the supply also available um, in this time when people are really um, you know just searching for for these baking products. Um, so it's I think one of the things that we we will want to be exploring is how we can um, you know make sure that uh, the sales that we're seeing can also correlate with the education that we're that we're aiming to um, promote with with this wide scale adoption of these types of products. Thank you, thank you. And then I have another question and you might have said this and I missed it, but I was looking for um, source of soybeans and whether you have organic sources or how that works. Yeah, sure, it's all organically sourced. Um, so all the soybeans uh, that, that are being used are organic, non-GMO. Um, right now they're all being grown um, in the Midwest coming from a Midwest cooperative. Um, we benefit really from, you know, we, we don't have direct control over that in the sense that we're working with partners that are producing the soy milk. So they're the ones directly sourcing those soybeans. Um, but we benefit from the existing consumer demands on soy to have it for, for whole soy production to be moving towards organic non-GMO. So currently the suppliers that we work with uh, or the, the tofu manufacturers, the soy milk manufacturers um, are completely organic non-GMO operations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know we need to, we're due on time, but I actually just real quickly want to see if Denver and Jenna have any uh, questions to surface from the audience before we sure. move on. So we actually were just hearing some questions from the audience about challenges you've faced and if you're still, how you're overcoming those now and how you're, maybe one of those is, is how it shows up in differentiation in the, in the market and how you're overcoming that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think um, so. In terms of challenges on the on on the CPG side, or I guess I'll kind of speak to speak to both. I think what what we haven't seen actually, which is great, is too many challenges on the ingredient side of our business. So we've seen, um, you know, companies still the the signals that we're seeing is that there's still um, resources being put into product development, product innovation, which is which is great to see. I think that's a great signal that. That um, you know, there's there's still a lot of interest in keeping that momentum going even through this time. Um, on the CPG side, I think the biggest um, the biggest challenge that we've had is seeing uh, the the food service opportunities pretty much like dry up. So that's that's part of what we see as this opportunity and moving to e-commerce and retail is is kind of following where people are buying their food right now. Thank you so much, Claire.